The unique requirements of microfluidics really depends on the size, density, and arrangement of features, along with the material and material thickness. In terms of size of the features, our manufacturing process standards are as low as 250 microns. This includes features such as channels and vias. However, we have successfully done 125 micron channels. One thing to keep in mind, however, is that the smaller features tend to be lead to a more difficult and expensive scale-up. With regards to the density and arrangement of features, it is all about a balance of spacing. You want features far enough apart so that the area around the features can be bonded properly, but close enough together that it meets design requirements. Here at A-Line, we have standardized edge-to-edge -edge spacing between 1 to 2 millimeters between features. Now, with material thickness, the standard material we typically work with ranges from 1 mil to 125, but we have worked with other different size materials. One thing to keep note is that thicker materials tend to be a bit more difficult to bond well with each other, but A-Line does have different process for dealing with different kinds of and thicknesses of materials to ensure proper bonding. On the other hand, thinner materials can flex more, which can either be a need or a detriment to a project. All in all, when it comes to material thicknesses, it all depends on the customer's needs and functionality of the part being built. At A-Line, we manufacture microfluidic devices using our proprietary laminate technology. This is a technology that's highly adaptable, so we're able to apply it to virtually any customer's design. We're able to take a design and slice it into its sub-layers that then get produced using a combination of laser cutting, die cutting, and CNC milling. We also have a fabrication team that's highly skilled in assembling these layers together in a clean room environment, producing all the internal and external features. So typically, microfluidic prototyping shops are limited by a four inch diameter wafer. We have batch sizes that are about 15 times larger than that. So right off the bat, we're able to produce larger quantities quicker and more reliably. Initial builds are used to optimize the parameters of lasers, die, and clicker press to minimize time and maximize efficiency. Now, lasers deal with powers and speeds. These are used to make sure that we are able to cleanly cut material as time efficient as possible. Optimization is key here because it can reduce or eliminate the need of post-processing the material. Using the process of batch manufacturing at the lasers allows material to be processed by the lasers continuously, leading to little to no downtime of lasers. Now, along with that, multiple lasers running simultaneously assist in the efficiency of batch manufacturing. Die cutting parameters help determine how quick and how much material can be processed without damaging the material or affecting the quality of the cuts. Die cutting also offers a quick turnaround to production because you're able to process multiple sheets of material at the same time. Here at A-Line, we have seen it affect production by reducing the production cycle time by 50% while also increasing the final processing of parts by 500%. So the kind of manufacturing we do here at A-Line is high mix, low volume. And what that means is that we have a wide variety of designs and parts while keeping the quantity low. To really organize this uh, manufacturing process, we've had to establish a set of standardized work instructions. What the work instruction does is that it outlines each step of the build process, starting from material prep to final post-processing. It's very easy to read and follow and it allows for even the most complex builds to be comprehensible. Another advantage of the work instructions is that it can be amended. While in process of a build, if we find that there's any improvements or changes to be made, we can write those details down in the notes section. This allows us to keep our quality consistent as well as allow room for improvement. The work instruction breaks down complex manufacturing processes into simple and easy to understand steps. This allows for any team member to pick up and continue a build throughout any step of the manufacturing process. The work instruction emphasizes quality throughout in order to ensure continuous improvement of our products. Throughout the manufacturing process, there are quality assurance checks in order to ensure that our devices are up to customer specification. Last year, we've been working on an automated reporting tool that links to our work instructions. The reporting tool captures categories that are specific to our build process, um, it also helps us know in specific areas where we're succeeding and where we're not. We can look at the data collectively and see where we need to focus our quality control efforts. 